The following presentation is a summary review of the Urban Design Master Plan, or UDMP, for the Baker District Redevelopment in Guelph, Ontario. This summary includes highlights from the Urban Design Master Plan document and also includes two updated perspective views of the development at the end of the presentation. Within this presentation, you will hear from myself, Megan Tortza of DTAH, Duncan Bates of Diamond and Schmidt, and Jenny McMinn from Urban Equation. The complete Urban Design Master Plan is available for download on the City of Guelph's website. The Urban Design Master Plan seeks to summarize the urban design ambition and details of the Baker District redevelopment, sufficient to articulate how the elements of the public and private realm will work together to create a development of high quality that fits well into its context. The plan's contents are developed in partnership with the City of Guelph in order for the urban design elements of the development to be evaluated, with the ambition to ensure new developments have examined opportunities and constraints of the site and provide design solutions that are context sensitive and respond to urban design policy context. The Urban Design Master Plan process for the Baker District redevelopment includes a significant public consultation program, allowing for multiple engagement opportunities for the development team and key stakeholders to engage with the public. The Urban Design Master Plan is organized with an introduction and four subsequent parts or chapters that outline the various characteristics of the site and proposed redevelopment. These parts include Part 1, wherein the site's physical context, policy context, and urban design principles for the redevelopment are summarized. Part 2, wherein the urban design master plan, including the integration of public realm and sustainable urban design policies, are summarized. Part 3, wherein preliminary development yields or statistics are summarized. And Part 4, wherein notes on phasing and implementation are summarized. An introduction to the Urban Design Master Plan is also contained within the report, where the vision, process, and consulting team for the Baker District redevelopment are summarized. With respect to the vision for the Baker District redevelopment, the objective is to transform the existing municipal parking lot and adjacent properties fronting Wyndham Street into a compact district nestled into the city's historic core and anchored by a new central library and open space. The development team, led by Windmill Developments and the City of Guelph, have held three public engagement events leading up to the creation of the Baker District UDMP. Event number one, held in November 2018, provided the public with an introduction to the project and asked for input into what the public wanted the project to deliver. In January 2019, we held our second public engagement event, where we asked the public to help narrow the focus on sustainability. At that event, the public voted on goal statements relating to the One Planet Living framework, helping us move towards defining the big moves for the project's sustainable design. Later that year, in May, we returned to share the design progress of the new Guelph Public Library and adjacent Urban Square. Since then, we have been working to finalize the Urban Design Master Plan. Although we originally wanted to present the UDMP to the public in person, the fourth event has been moved online. The materials now posted to the city's website, including the UDMP, represent the voices we heard over the past two and a half years. The team contributing to the Urban Design Master Plan includes the following. The development partner, Windmill Development Group, the design team of Diamond and Schmidt Architects and DTAH. The engineering consulting team, including RJC providing structural engineering, Smith and Anderson providing mechanical and electrical engineering, RWDI providing microclimate engineering, Stantec Consulting providing civil engineering, and WSP providing transportation engineering services. Our sustainability consultant is Urban Equation Corporation. Our planning consultant is Urban Strategies, Inc. 
Our, and our construction manager for pre-construction services is Malul Blamey. And now we will move into an overview of part one of the Urban Design Master Plan. The Baker District redevelopment is located on the large, irregular block bounded by Chapel Lane to the south and southeast, Wyndham Street to the northeast, and Baker Street to the west in the northern part of downtown Guelph. The Baker District redevelopment site, known as the site throughout the UDMP, comprises the city-owned Baker Street and Wyndham parking lots and adjacent properties on Wyndham Street that will permit active frontage for the development. The city is currently working to acquire the two Wyndham Street properties in order to implement the development proposal outlined in this master plan. These two buildings are known municipally as 146 and 166 Wyndham Street. The site's history is extensive and includes indigenous occupation as well as its use as public burial ground, an industrial site where sewing machines were manufactured, a lawn bowling club and curling club, and most recently as a parking lot. A total of five archaeological investigations have been undertaken in and around the Baker District redevelopment site in the last two decades. The site today is relatively flat and without significant existing landscape. The bedrock is between 5 and 8.5 meters below grade, and some soil contaminants exist and will be removed at the time of excavation. The site is flanked by heritage buildings including the designated Dominion Public Building at 138 Wyndham Street North and several churches and other bu buildings on the Municipal Heritage Register. Part of the analysis of the site's physical context is understanding is the understanding of the existing pedestrian network in and around the site and consideration of how the development will contribute to that network. The proposed site plan has been designed to integrate, integrate well with existing pedestrian patterns in the downtown. The plan has evolved to include three separate buildings to enhance porosity of the site and encourage connections to the surrounding streets. These buildings also frame a new publicly accessible street extending from Wyndham Street to Baker Street and a new urban square fronting onto Wyndham Street and marking the entrance to the new public library. The new public street crossing from Wyndham Street North to Baker Street, known as Library Lane in the UDMP, will provide accessible entry to the library and other buildings within the redevelopment. Additionally, it will be designed to accommodate active transportation as well as special events with surface materials that treat it as an extension of the urban square. The new urban square fronting Wyndham Street will add to the existing network of urban parks in the downtown, complementing Market Square at City Hall as well as St. George's Square, while also defining a new northern gateway to downtown Guelph. Another important consideration in regards to the site's existing context are the various existing and proposed views framed and supported by the redevelopment. Views that are important within the development include views to the new library from Wyndham Street and Aramosa Road, views of the sidewall of the Dominion Public Building framing the new library lane, views into the urban square from Wyndham Street, and views of the South Block buildings from Library Lane. The view corridor to the Basilica of Our Lady Immaculate from Aramosa Road will be maintained and significantly influence the form and massing of the redevelopment's buildings. With respect to the policy context of our work, the Baker District redevelopment will be guided by the City of Guelph's applicable policy and guidelines, including the Official Plan, Downtown Guelph's Secondary Plan, Urban Design Manual, and Downtown Streetscape Manual, and built form standards. The vision, principles, and objectives of the Downtown Guelph Secondary Plan are upheld and reinforced by the 12 urban design principles outlined in the Urban Design Master Plan. These include create a welcoming, comfortable, publicly accessible and inclusive urban district, demonstrate design and environmental excellence, create a mix of uses that benefit the community, Provide housing that is affordable. Provide a vibrant, safe, 
programmable public square on Wyndham Street. Promote pedestrian circulation and porosity. Reconnect to the river. Make connections to the arts and indigenous communities. Protect views and create view opportunities. Material compatibility with historic fabric. Demonstrate best practices in multimodal transportation and parking integration. Design for a comfortable microclimate. Further detail on how each principle applies to the Baker District redevelopment is contained within the Urban Design Master Plan. So moving now to part two of the UDMP. The master plan for the Baker District redevelopment responds to the urban design principles as set out in part one. As stated previously, the master plan anticipates the development of three new buildings as part of the Baker District, along with a new east-west street referred to as Library Lane, and two new publicly accessible open spaces, the Urban Square on Wyndham Street as previously described, and Baker Court. Contained within the UDMP are representations of the Baker District redevelopment at a variety of levels of detail, ranging from simple massing models to more detailed plans. Currently in the schematic design phase of development, the design of the Baker District continues to evolve, and therefore the content contained within the UDMP represents the project's team design intent with respect to the buildings and landscapes to be built as part of the redevelopment. In particular, the details associated with the Guelph Public Library scale and spatial organization are in progress and influenced by a separate design process beyond that of the residential components of the redevelopment. As the final details are not yet known, precedent images are used to demonstrate design intent. The landscape and public realm concept of the Baker District redevelopment prioritizes pedestrian porosity and the development of publicly accessible open spaces that are flexible to accommodate a range of uses throughout the year. Incorporating a new east-west street as well as a series of new publicly accessible open spaces, the landscape concept situates the new buildings within a ground plane of pavers, planting and seeding, and art, inspired by districts such as the Distillery District in Toronto, where a material-rich ground plane runs uninterrupted between buildings, and where pedestrian amenities such as seating, lighting, planting, and public art are all coordinated within a simple palette of materials and details. Flanked by public rights of way on all sides, the redevelopment's principal addition to the street network is the proposed library lane, intended as a plus or minus 20 meter two-way pedestrian priority street that may be closed off to traffic during special events in order for the adjacent public spaces, including the urban square, to spill out safely into the street. Library Lane is publicly accessible and beneath it extends the underground parking structure for the redevelopment. To support the redevelopment, Baker Street is assumed to be converted to a two-lane, two-way right-of-way. It is assumed to be approximately 18 meters in width, with parking on either side, as can be accommodated, considering existing curb cuts, access points, and building frontages. Chapel Lane is intended to continue to act as a service laneway for properties on Quebec and Wyndham Streets, while also providing vehicle access to the southern underground ramp to the Baker District's underground parking structure. In the long term, it is assumed that Baker Street will be further improved by paving, planting, and curb details characteristic of a flexible street as described in the City of Guelph's Downtown Streetscape Manual. Wyndham Street is anticipated to be improved also as per the Downtown Streetscape Manual to include a narrowing of the asphalt width, reconfiguration of on-street parking provisions, and improved planting. Chapel Lane may also be improved long term renovated to adopt more material aspects of the downtown streetscape manual akin to the precedent of Douglas Street. These improvements are assumed to be undertaken by the City of Guelph.
Contained within the UDMP are preliminary street sections for Baker Street, Library Lane, and Chapel Lane, illustrating how these streets will evolve to increase pedestrian comfort, the urban tree canopy, and improve functionality in the short and longer terms. The principal open space within the Baker District redevelopment is the urban square, which serves as a formal southbound reception of the Aramosa Road and Wyndham Street axes and view corridor. The urban square will also provide a northern open space bookend to the network of open spaces within the downtown. As such, the urban square enhances the library's civic address while providing a flexible gathering space for both organized and informal activities. Baker Court, while fully integrated, with the urban square and library lane is an open space with shared or layered uses, including pedestrian linkages, exterior spillout spaces, and functional vehicular service access. As noted earlier, the character of Baker Court is conceived of as similar to the distillery district in Toronto. The Baker District redevelopment includes three new mixed-use buildings distributed across the site in such a way as to enliven adjacent streetscapes, respect the built-form context of their surroundings, contribute to the health and well-being of residents and visitors, and promote pedestrian connectivity through the district. Built-form transitions are employed in the massing of both the north and the south block buildings in order to knit the new buildings into their context, which is characterized predominantly by the low and mid-rise historical building stock of downtown Guelph. Both taller buildings within the development employ a podium tower format, where the podia expand to meet and address the adjacent public rights of way and create a meaningful street wall condition while the towers above are set back from the podium edges and limited in floor plate area to meet the zoning bylaw requirements. The Guelph Public Library occupies the majority of the podium of the North Block building, allowing that use to be expressed meaningfully within the architecture of the building. The tower above is disconnected from the podium by a built form reveal, which coupled with a change in material, allows the separate reading of tower from base, residences from public institution. The south block tower is set upon a lower podium base, with the transition between commercial uses at grade and the residential uses above occurring using the same techniques of step back, reveal, and change in material as employed in the north block. The distance between the north and south block towers is established through the insertion of library lane and step backs from the podium to tower levels of both buildings, generating a separation distance of at minimum 25 meters between tower faces, consistent with the zoning bylaw. With respect to building entrances, the main residential entrances for the North Block Building and South Block Building A are both located on Baker Street, as is the main entrance to the South Block's Building B. The main entrance for the library is located on the Urban Square, facing both Wyndham Street and Library Lane. Building loading is provided from Baker Street within an enclosed loading bay in the North Block and within Baker Court in the South Block. Parking entrances are provided at the northern end of the North Block, as well as from Chapel Lane. The underground parking levels P1 and P2 are interconnected, permitting both entrances to be used to access all levels of the underground parking. The North Block is defined by a 15-story building made up of a podium of four stories containing the new Guelph Public Library main branch and an 11-story residential tower above. The South Block is defined by two separate buildings. Building A, located immediately south of Library Lane, is a 15-story mixed-use building containing retail uses at grade on both north and south ends and a residential lobby facing Baker Street within the middle of the ground plan. Above the ground floor are 14 stories of residential uses. 
Building B is a low-rise institutional building running east-west along the northern edge of Chapel Lane, with principal entry located on Baker Street and secondary entry opportunities located both from within Baker Court as well as the southeast corner of the site, visible from St. George's Square. Building materiality for the new buildings within the Baker District redevelopment is proposed to be distinct between buildings, but share a number of common characteristics inspired by the way the new architecture relates to its heritage context. This includes the use of brick masonry and stone-like materials within both the north and south blocks, inspired by the brick and stone architecture surrounding the site, as well as the red brick industrial buildings that once stood on the site as part of the Raymond sewing machine factory. Views through the Baker District redevelopment are encouraged at a number of elevations in order for the redevelopment to fit into and contribute to its surrounding urban context. The protected view corridor of the Church of Our Lady influences the shape of all buildings within the redevelopment. The redevelopment respects and adheres to the zoning requirements associated with this view corridor. Shadow impacts generated by the Baker District redevelopment have been modeled in accordance with the City of Guelph's Sun and Shadow Study Terms of Reference and are included in the UDMP. As demonstrated by the shadow study, the placement, height, and massing of the buildings of the Baker District redevelopment do not cause excess shadowing on the surrounding neighborhoods, including parks, adjacent residential uses, public open space, private amenity space, and retail streets. Specifically, the urban square open space is provided with a good balance of sun and shade throughout the day, including significant solar access throughout the morning and early afternoon from equinox through the summer months, with a calculated sun access factor of 0 0.65. Additionally, there are no known additional areas where the formal shadow impact criteria are applicable that are negatively impacted by the shadows generated by the Baker District redevelopment. With respect to the short-term and long-term integration of the urban square with the renewed Wyndham Street North, the square is designed to blend into the long-term vision of Wyndham Street while having its own unique character coordinated with the design of the library beyond. In the short term, the sidewalk on Wyndham Street will pass uninterrupted along the eastern frontage of the urban square, whereas long-term more opportunity for street tree planting and pedestrian realm improvements along Wyndham Street will allow the urban square to visually expand to the east. In both the short and the long-term vision of the urban square, it's designed to be compatible with the materials used in Library Lane. With respect to the short-term and long-term integration of the Baker Court within the renewed Baker Street and Chapel Lane, Baker Court is designed with compatible materials to both Library Lane to the north and the renewed Chapel Lane to the south. In the short term, Chapel Lane will remain an asphalt laneway, whereas in the longer term, it is anticipated that Chapel Lane will be improved so that the language of unit pavers and other details will extend the full width of Chapel Lane. The sustainability plan for the Baker District was designed using the One Planet Living Framework. We refer to the plan that we put together for the Baker Project as the Baker One Planet Action Plan. One Planet Living has been used to ensure the Baker District's residents, workers and visitors can live, work and play within the Earth's resources. The One Planet Action Plan addresses all 10 of the One Planet Living's sustainability principles. We have addressed outcomes, indicators, and targets for each of these principles, which will help guide decision making from design through to construction and eventually operations. The 10 One Planet Living principles are comprised of health and happiness, equity and local economy, culture and community, land use and wildlife, sustainable water, local and sustainable food materials and products, travel and transport, zero waste, and zero carbon. 
Although all 10 of the One Planet Living principles are important, some activities will have a bigger impact on our communities than others. In order to help the project team understand where to focus our efforts, we conducted what is called an ecological footprint for the whole city of Guelph to help us understand how the Baker District specifically could better reduce its own ecological footprint. We know already that the way that we live as Canadians is unsustainable. If everyone lived like an average Canadian, we would need about five planets worth of resources to sustain our consumption habits. What we calculated is that in Guelph, the city is using about four and a half planets. As you know, we only have one planet. We need to plan so that everyone, everywhere, lives happy, healthy lives within the planets within the limit of the planets rather, while leaving space for wildlife and wilderness. In order for us to focus our efforts on those areas with the greatest environmental impact, we completed this ecological footprinting for the city of Guelph. At its most basic, an eco footprint measures how much nature we have, the supply, and how much nature we use, demand. Just like in economics, when the demand for resources is more than the planet can supply, we end up in a resource deficit. The result of our eco-footprinting exercise showed us that the three biggest contributors to the average Guelphite's eco-footprint are in fact food consumption, buildings and their associated energy and carbon use, and transportation. With this information in hand, the One Planet Action Plan for Baker prioritizes food energy and carbon, and transportation. In terms of the amount of development that will take place on the Baker District, the site is made up of four key parts, the first being the North Block. On the North Block, there are two main building components. The Guelph Public Library will be 89,600 square feet, roughly 8,324 meters squared, on the north block as well, the residential building will be comprised of 125 to 135 units. The next piece of the Baker District site is the south block, including building A. Building A includes both residential building with 180 to 190 units, as well as retail area made up of 11,000 square feet or 1,022 meters squared. The other aspect on the south block is what's called Building B. It will likely be made up of institutional area comprised of about 62,100 square feet or 5,770 meters squared. In addition, the Baker District will have a handful of open spaces. Those are made up of the urban square area, roughly 14,000 square feet, 1,300 meters squared, the library lane area, 20,667 square feet, roughly 1,920 meters squared, and lastly the Baker Court area, 18,514 square feet, uh, equivalent to 1,720 meters squared. In terms of the residential uh, unit mix, 80% will be dedicated to one bedroom and one bedroom plus den, with average sizes of between 450 to 600 square feet for the one bedrooms and average uh, unit sizes of between 550 and 650 square feet for the one bedroom plus den units. In addition, the other 20% of the residential units will be made comprised of, of 20, but <laughs> I apologize, of two bedroom units with an average size of 750 to 850 square feet. The Baker District will uh, include affordable housing. The affordable housing component is proposed to be 12%. Discussions are underway with the City of Guelph to identify a funding mechanism to support uh, the incorporation of affordable housing units on site. In terms of phasing and implementation, 
Uh, in June of this year, uh, we are doing our final public presentation. In the summer of 2020, reports will be reviewed by city staff. In September of 2020, the Urban Design Master Plan will go before Council. In spring of 2021, we will launch sales for the North Tower uh, and begin construction. And in fall 2023 to spring 2024, uh, we're aiming for pro full project completion. In parallel to the Urban Design Master Plan effort, the design team has been developing the schematic design for the Baker District. And to mark the completion of the schematic design phase, Windmill commissioned two new views of the redevelopment. In this first view, as described within the Urban Design Master Plan, the district is seen from the northeast, including the new urban square facing Wyndham Street and the new east-west library lane connecting Wyndham to Baker Street. The new library frames the urban square, with one arm reaching out to Wyndham Street. Above the library podium, the North Tower contains approximately 130 residential units. On the south side of Library Lane, the South Tower includes retail in the street-related podium and approximately 185 residential units above. Along the southern edge of the site, Building B can be seen, which is planned for non-residential uses, which could include institutional, office, or education. Podium rooftops and lower terraces will provide opportunities for urban agriculture and community gardens, whereas tower rooftops will be available for solar panel installation. In the second view, the urban square is highlighted. The Baker District will be a landmark for mixed-use projects, carefully integrated to the downtown context and featuring a new prominent urban square and public library facing Wyndham Street. It will be a green and vibrant community based on the One Planet Living framework with a particular focus on low carbon, the incorporation of urban agriculture and healthy living, and providing a sustainable transportation strategy that emphasizes active transportation options while also providing underground parking to meet the evolving needs of the community today and into the future. As a new home to approximately 500 residents, it will become a vibrant node within the downtown and bring new life and vibrancy to this historic city centre.